Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. grill. Mm-mm. Won't these spare ribs look tasty? Tell you a secret, son. One your grandma taught me. The meat you're cooking is only as good as the barbecue sauce you use. And to make the most mouth-watering barbecue sauce ever, put a little French's Worcestershire right into it. There's more than 15 spices and ingredients in French's Worcestershire, one better than the other. There's all the right things to bring out the best flavor in a hot or a sweet barbecue sauce. Huh? What's that, Billy? Say Mama uses French's Worcestershire right from the bottle? <laughs> it's good that way, too, son. All right, kids, come and get it! <laughs> Here's a special offer. Get 12 delicious new barbecue sauce recipes. Just write Barbecue Book Box 56. That's Box 56, Rochester, New York. like your customers are in any hurry to go home tonight, Kitty. They're really roaring. Yeah, it must be the sign of the moon or something. Well, whatever it is, it's good for business. Yeah, but I'd settle for a little peace and quiet right now. It'd be all right with me if they all went home. Well, I can take a hint. Oh, you know I didn't mean you, Matt. Have another drink. No? No, I don't think so, Kitty. Oh, Matt. <laughs> don't worry about it, Kitty. I'm tired and I just want to turn in. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, Kitty. Sure, man. Night. Good night. Well, oh, I could have come for them glasses, Miss Kitty. It's all right, Sam. Doesn't look like you've had much chance to get away from behind this bar. Well, you get me pretty busy pouring, that's a fact. Yeah. Hello, Kitty. Oh, hello, Arnie. Glad to see that hard-nosed marshal go out of here. And that's so? I've been waiting to sit with you. Well, now, Arnie, it's late. It seemed like he never was going to move along. Time you went on home, too, isn't it, Arnie? Uh, I've been waiting a long time. Well, you come back another time, huh? I, he ain't no more of a man than me. Matt's an old friend. I'm hankering to be friends, too, Kitty. You and me, we could have a good time. Now, listen. Yeah, I had my eye on you for a long time, kid. Huh? You're a pretty gal. Real pretty. Well, that's nice, Arnie, but I'm going home now. Not just a little glass of whiskey. No, Arnie, I said I'm going home. You better go home, too. Well, now, you ain't being very friendly. Well, I can be a lot worse. Now, go on home, Arnie, before there's trouble. <laughs> Pussyfoot and Arnie. Mm. I hear you. I... I just didn't want to disturb your sleep, Patty. I reckon you didn't. 
I didn't figure to be so late. You never do. Turn up that lamp. Ain't no sense in you sitting up. I got no feel for sleep when you're with that woman. Oh, now, Hattie, there ain't nothing. I've watched you making cow eyes at her every time I've been in town. There ain't nothing to it. There's enough to it, so you haven't been home to supper in a week. Oh, now, Hattie, let's it's not... set out on the table for you night after night. A man has business to attend huh. to. Business. Well, I'll tell you something, Arnie Grimes. It's the kind of business I ain't about to stand for. I come out here with you to this misbegotten country. I, I, I parch and peel and wrinkle up, taking care of you and tending to your place. Well, it ain't an easy country, Hattie. I ain't expecting it to be easy. But I got a right to expect you to pay me some mind. A man's got a right to go into town. And take up with every saloon woman he meets, I Now, there ain't no harm in what I do. I seen her with a fancy clothes, a painted mouth, tempting a man away from his wife. I ain't left you, Hattie. Well, you may not have left our house. But you left me all right. You left me a long time ago. Thanks for dinner, Matt. Sure. Maybe I should have eaten more while I had the chance. Now, what do you mean? Well, I'm not going to have you around to buy my meals for me. You'll make out. Now, Matt. <laughs> I was joking, Kitty. How long do you expect to be gone? Oh, three, four days, I imagine. Mm -hmm. At least till Sally's back on her feet again. I don't expect she'll stay in bed too long. She'll have a dozen. She has a baby. She and Hank are getting to have quite a family, aren't they? Yeah, seven of them, I think. No, this will make eight. Hmm. You know, marriage is a good thing, Matt. Huh? You thinking about it? I said it was good. I didn't say I was going to do it. I better get you back to your place. The stage leaves around 2 o'clock. I'm all packed. And I'll carry your bags down to the depot for you. All right. Now look there. Hmm? A couple of your friends. What? Arnie Grimes and his wife. That man gives me the creeps. Now, the way I heard it, he's kind of sweet on you. No, Matt. Hmm. Wonder what they're doing in town this time of day. I don't know, but it looks like they're heading for the stage depot. Hmm? Yeah, they sure are. Well, why in the world would they... Oh, Matt, you don't suppose they're going to take the stage out, do you? <laughs> it could be. Well, why in the world would they be going to Fort Larned? Maybe they got a friend having a baby, too. Matt, this isn't funny. I was looking forward to this trip. It's half ruined before I even start. Uh, cheer up. Maybe they're only riding out to the crossroads. I probably won't be that lucky. <laughs> Come on, we better get you back to your place so you can change or you won't be making that trip at all. <laughs> Here you go, Jim. Oh, Marshal, I didn't see you standing there. Might as well put this bag up, huh? Yeah, sure. You riding with me today, Marshal? No, not me, Jim. Miss Kitty. She'll be along in a minute. Well, I guess I should have known. This ain't exactly your kind of bag. <laughs> no, not exactly. Yeah, Miss Kitty going for? At Fort Larned. You uh, think you can keep that rig on the road? Well, now, Marshal, seeing as Miss Kitty's a passenger, I'll sure try. <laughs> She'll be glad to hear that. Hello, Marshal. Oh, Arnie, Miss Grimes. Afternoon, Marshal. Uh, give the man the bag, Arnie. Well, he ain't going without it. And tell him to be careful with it. Oh, I'll be careful, ma'am. Yeah, I'll take it. Marshal, did I hear you say Miss Kitty was taking this stage? That's right. Well, what do you know? Arnie, g give me a hand into the stage. All right, Hattie, all right. And you needn't think. You're going to stand out there in the street waiting to ogle her either. You come up here on the stage and take your seat. I'm coming. So long, Marshal. So long, Arnie. Have a good trip. You needn't worry about him, none. He'll have a nice trip, all right. He's already started lally-gagging about that you, woman. You keep your mouth shut, Hattie. She's a friend of the Marshal's. I wouldn't be surprised. She's a friend of most of the men, ain't she? Hattie. Sorry, Marshal. Never mind, Arnie. 
You better get in and sit down. Yeah. Reckon I'd better. Matt! Matt! Well, we just about to give you up, Miss Kitty. Thanks for holding up, Jim. Sure. Well, now, I'll see you in about a week. All right. You uh, give my regards to Hank and sure. Sally, will you? You tell him to send me back a cigar. <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, give you a hand up, Miss Kitty. I can manage, thank you. You all sit down there? Yeah, all set. All right, take her away, Tim. Okay. Yeah. Munch a bunch of Fritos. Corn chips, it's not polite to smack your lips. But you can't help it with Fritos. Corn chips, munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos. Corn chips. Next time you want something to munch on, try Fritos. They're so crisp, so tasty, so good. You'll see right away why we say Fritos are the corn chips made to munch. Fill a big bowl with Fritos next time you settle down on the front porch or in the yard. Boy, there's contentment in every munch. Munch, 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 munch Fritos. Corn chips. Fritos are golden chips of corn, just right with long, cold drinks or any other summer food. And they're the ideal warmer weather snack for grown-ups and children alike. Get a bag of Fritos corn chips today and munch a bunch. They're America's favorite corn chips, made to munch. Munch, 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 munch Fritos corn chips. Like this, the driver could at least miss the biggest holes in the road. You all right, Kitty? Yeah, I'm all right. Here, let me pick up that handbag. No, for never you. mind. I can get it. Well, there ain't no trouble. She or... can get it. Okay, Hattie. Sure is a funny thing. We should all be riding along together this way. <laughs> Hattie and me ain't been up to see your folks in two years. I reckon you don't make this trip often either, do you, Kitty? Not often. Yeah. Ain't what you'd call one of them deluxe rides, I'll say that for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> it just seems like we might as well be riding down a wash or a gully on this road. Don't it seem that way, Kitty? Wouldn't you say? I guess so. I always say, though, that, that when you're traveling, it's the folks you're with that counts. It sure is pleasurable to be riding along with you, Kitty. Ain't you got nothing to say to that? Listen, Arnie, I don't feel much like talking. Arnie, quit making a fool of yourself. Now, there ain't nothing foolish about a man trying to be friendly-like. Is there, Kitty? I don't know, Arnie. Your wife may be right. Mister? Don't bother me, boy. I'll get these windows clean and get in out of the sun. Mister? I told you to quit bothering me. Go on now, get. You aiming to get them windows clean? My land, yes, I'm aiming to get them clean. What do you think I'm scrubbing at them for? You ain't got that top one over there. For her. Yeah. Now, look, you listen to me, boy. I can see it just as plain. You left a big smear. I told you once before, I ain't telling you again. Now, get. You ain't done it right. Get. I don't care if there's a big old smear up there. Boy, I'm going to bang your head in a minute. Now, get. I did miss a smear or two. Bad enough, but I have to bother such chores. I come smart. I could come along smart and off and let me. Well, hello there, Miss Grimes. I want to see the marshal. Oh, yes, ma'am, but he ain't in there right this minute, Miss Grimes. He ought to be back anytime. I'll wait for him inside there. Oh, well, all right, ma'am. I, I ain't trying to stop you. I. 
Maybe we should take time to fight the other folks. Best, best on these windows anyway. Keep you've got sun more water on you than you got on the windows, Chester. Oh, Mr. Dillon. If you keep on scrubbing, we'll almost be able to see out of that window again. It don't seem to me there's much worth seeing around here. Yeah, you may be right. Mr. Dillon, you better get on in there. Oh? Well, what's the trouble? I don't know what the trouble is, but Arnie Grimes' his wife is waiting to see, and she don't look like no patient woman to me. Oh. Well, I just soon wash windows. Hello, Miss Grimes. You, uh, want to see me? I want you to make an arrest. Well, uh, you better tell me what it's about. That's your business, isn't it, arresting folks? Well, when they've done something wrong... Wrong's uh... been done. And when there's proof... There's proof, all right. Well, who do you want me to arrest? That woman, Kitty. Kitty? Kitty Russell? That's the one, that saloon girl. Well, Miss Grimes, accusing a person is pretty serious business. It certainly is, Marshal, and I want you to lock her up. Well, what's she done? She stole. Stole? Kitty stole? My pin, my diamond pin. I want you to go get it, Marshal, and then I want you to lock her up. Now, Miss Grimes, Kitty had no reason to steal. No reason. She don't mind stealing anything, anything at Look, all. Look, Miss Grimes, I know Kitty pretty well. Maybe you better go home and think this over, huh? I've been thinking, Marshal, a good deal, and I want you to get to the bottom of this. That's your job, isn't it, to protect honest folks? Yeah. Yeah, that's my job. All right, then. You'll do something about that woman. <laughs> Hello, Mac. Sit down. Hello, Kitty. Thanks. You want a drink? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. You look like you could use one. Sam. Yeah, Miss Kitty. Bring Matt a drink, will you? Sure, Miss Kitty. Uh, you're not having one? No, mm, it's a little early for me. Uh. Ah, thanks, Sam. Sure. Now, what's got you worn down at this time of day? Well, Kitty, you, uh... You wouldn't believe it. Try me. I have spent the last two hours with Hattie Grimes. <laughs> That'd wear anybody down. What's she wrong with you? That's about that stage ride you took together. Do you remember? I'll never forget it. Poor Hattie sitting there like a crow on a barn roof with Arnie acting like a darn fool. It was a miserable trip. Yeah, I can imagine. What's she want? Well, Kitty, she spent most of the morning telling me how she lost a pen when she was on the stage. Huh? Yeah. And she's been telling me that you took it. I took it? Uh huh. She wants me to lock you up. Is this some kind of joke? No, not to her, it isn't. I think she'd have put the irons on you herself if I'd let her. Matt, she must be crazy. You ought to be glad you got a friend in the marshal's office, Kitty. She's a mighty determined woman. Poor thing. I guess I kind of feel sorry for her. Sorry? Mm-hmm. I don't know why you'd be sorry for her, Kitty. Well, I know, Matt. And Hattie knows. Hi. Maybe you'll recall this tuneful reminder of times past. This is Dennis James with something else worth remembering. It's this. You're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Bran. See, it's the normal, natural way to youthful regularity. The whole brand content of Kellogg's All Bran supplies your system with all the bulk-forming food that you need every day. There's only one All Bran. It's Kellogg's All Bran. So relieve irregularity from lack of bulk, as millions do, with a bowl full of Kellogg's All Bran each morning. A double L hyphen B R A N. It's Kellogg's All Brand. Well, hello there, Miss Kitty. Hello. 
down hall, Chester. Matt in his office. Uh, yes, ma'am, he is. I was just going for the mail, but I could walk along back to the no, office. No, no, Chester, me. never mind. You go on for the mail. Well, all right, Miss Kitty. If, if you're sure you don't want me, it ain't far. I'm sure, Chester. Matt? Uh, hello, Kitty. Come on in. Sit down. Matt, look here. Oh, what is it? Oh, where'd you get this? I found it in my bag this morning. I hadn't used this bag since I came back from Fort Leonard. Matt, this is Hattie's diamond pin. Hattie's? You want to lock me up? Where'd you get it, Kitty? I don't know, Matt. It was in my bag, and I have no idea in the world how it got there. Well, I know. What? You took it. That's how. All right, Miss Grimes, come on in. You shouldn't leave the door open if you don't want folks to hear. I don't care who hears. Well, you ought to. I guess now the marshal will have to lock you up for certain. Now, look, Miss Grimes, I have... You've got the pin. You can see for yourself. You know I didn't take that, Mrs. Grimes. I know you did. And I want you locked up for it right now. Don't you let her get away. Kitty's not going anyplace. She'll be around if we need her. You're not going to lock her up? No, Miss Grimes, I'm not going to lock her up. That's right. That's right. Take her side. All you men take her side. Well, we'll see what the circuit judge has to say. Uh, uh, Miss Gentleman? Yeah, Chester. It's all seemed to you. I'd brother you didn't lean your chair back in the window. I cleaned the heart yesterday. Huh? I'm sorry, Chester. I, I forgot about your house cleanup. It's, well, it, it's mean enough to have to do it without somebody... Li- well, I do declare. Look at that, Mr. Dillon. What? <laughs> Doc's been out already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. What's the matter, Doc? Couldn't you sleep? Yeah, Doc. Or did you just stay up all night? <laughs> that. I've just come in from the Grimes' place. Oh, who's sick? It's Hattie. But she's not sick. She's been beaten. Beaten? Beaten half to death. I thought you ought to know, Matt. I, I did what I could for her. But she'll make it, but she's not too good. All right, Doc, thanks. Come on, Chester. Let's get the horses. <laughs> Arnie Grimes' place is good growing land, ain't it, Miss Jones? Yeah, it's rich soil around here. You'd think a man and his wife could live contented out here, now couldn't you? You need more than good crops for that, Chester. Yes, I suppose you're right. You reckon Arnie done it? Well, he could have. Looks like we're going to get a chance to ask him. Yeah. That is him riding his way. Uh Uh-huh. Let's wait for him. to my place? Uh-huh. We were. Yeah, I figured you might be. I'm saving you the rest of the trip. Go on. I did it, Marshal. I beat her. I figured you did. I ain't proud of it. I ain't never hit a woman before. She had to tell me, Marshal. She had to tell me true. About the pin? Yeah. Yeah, about the pin. She hit it in Kitty's purse, Marshal. She hit it there herself. She'd have seen her go to jail for it. Yeah. No, I made her tell me true. I'm ready for whatever the law says. I I ain't proud of what I done. It ain't easy to hit a woman. Not supposed to be easy, honey. All right, come on. the way it was, Kitty. Sometime during the trip, she slipped a pin in your purse. I don't know how she managed it, but she did. Oh, it doesn't matter. 
No, I guess it doesn't. It's all over now. No, Matt, it's not over. No? Well, what do you mean? It's not ever going to be over as long as men bring their women out to this country and then forget about them. They let them live on year after year, getting older and tireder and lonelier and they never even think about making their lives pleasant or interesting or even bearable. Hey, hold on, hold on. You're beginning to sound like a regular prairie preacher. Well, I might take it up. I'd sure never like for things to preach about. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right, Kitty. Only don't take it up till tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I think I know how you feel, Kitty. Yeah, I think maybe you do, Matt. I think maybe you do. Pepsi-Cola refreshes without filling. Why? Because it's truly light. Charlie, you're forgetting something. Wait, Kay, there's more. Yes, ice-cold Pepsi is the delicious refreshment that goes great at a picnic or a party. But, Charlie... And Pepsi goes fast. People like it, so keep plenty handy. There. Oh, you did fine, except for one thing. Well, I mentioned lightness and how Pepsi refreshes and how fast it goes. You left out Pepsi sociability. You know the be sociable song. But, Kay, I can't sing. I can. Listen. Be sociable, not smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Well, at least I can say this. Pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Please do. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Virginia Christine, Barney Phillips, and Richard Beals. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. I love the music on CBS. I think they cover the news the best. I love the drama on CBS. Their kind of comedy beats the rest. We're always happy and smiling. We keep contented by dialing CBS Radio. We always listen while we work. And keep listening now to WPT Radio, your CBS station in Charlotte, for the CBS News, followed by news analysis. Tonight at 7.10, Johnny Dollar has to work fast because his client is on his deathbed. His job is to find the client's niece in time to break up her wedding. Hear the Harriet Harris matter on yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Then stay tuned for suspense or a dramatization of one of Stephen Vincent Benet's great stories titled Elementals. This unusual plot revolves around an experiment to find out whether love is one of the powers that guides destiny or whether they are hate, fear, and hunger. Hear suspense at 7.35 and then the Mitch Miller Show at 8.10 on CBS and WBT Radio in Charlotte. The temperature 88 degrees, the time is 7 o'clock.